also a warm welcome to Alva Freude, who is now going to talk to us about internet filters gone wrong, in particular internet filters. And it's about youth threats against media compet competency. <laughs> welcome to this translation. Hello, good morning, everyone. Ah, we're actually ahead of time. Uh, that's something I never manage to do. I'm normally one that's late. I'll tell you a bit about the horror youth protection software. Um, I'll rush through things a bit, but we'll have a few minutes for questions. So these are the topics I'm going to talk about. And at the end, there's going to be something about the illegal data collection by German Telekom. So, if you watch TV, everything is very simple, right? <laughs> There's the crime program at 10, at, at, at 8, monsters at 10, and semi-nude people at 11 p.m. Um, and, well, what about the internet? Looks the same, doesn't it? Uh, rectangular box, and uh, do they still have the crime program at 8, monsters at 11, semi-nude at, monsters at 10 and semi-nude at 11, um, all very simple, right? But uh, the fact that there's a difference disturbed not just us, but also those that sell pictures of semi-nude people, which meant that uh, there was a state treaty, interstate treaty between the German Federal States on the protection of minors in the media, and, and that included filter programs, uh, and those that include filter, those that support filter programs, those websites can actually so show these images at lunchtime too, which didn't quite work. Uh, as a reason, in 2010, um, there was uh, the establishment, uh, there was a, a new a reform of that interstate treaty on youth protection, which uh, was to support um, filter programs more and uh, set up basically a, a walled community for children where they can play and all those evil monsters stay out. Uh, very typical gated community, therefore, which leads us to the motto of this year's Congress. So that was the wish of the professional youth protectors, uh, well, senior people mostly that have little idea of, of how things are in practice, but unfortunately that's how things go. And the whole thing didn't doesn't quite work, is not quite working. One of those protected surf rooms is called AskFin. It's a supposedly child-friendly search engine which has a whitelist, uh, which is then published to filter programs. And this whitelist has as little as 10,000 domains, roughly, not as visible normally, but there are ways and means to to find these. So if you get remove all the duplicates with and without www, you have about 5,000 domains that are actually allowed, and that's what 6 to 12-year-olds are supposed to be able to access. Everything else on a typical filter program is all blocked. Which is kind of ridic ridiculous, of course, if you assume that you have 30,000 schools, primary schools 15,000, so most p children will not even be able to visit their own primary school's website. There is not a single newspaper, only a newspaper museum included. Um, well, leave out the state broadcaster, Kinderkanal, a children's channel. So uh, allegedly these data are updated regularly, daily it even says, but if you look at the timestamp in the XML file that contains all these URLs, and the last one was from 2013. If that's true or not, we'll leave open, but that's what the timestamp says. So I accessed this file in June this year, and I accessed, accessed it a few days ago, mid-December, there was no change. So 2013 seems to be right. Here's a small selection of the websites. Some of them actually are quite suitable for children, um, but there are a few things where you really wonder, how does a skin cream website get in there? There it is. So 
how does that does that get in, get in there? And a few more things where you ask yourself: the Swedish website is included, so there are some things you, where you really wonder. Oh, there is a there is a for pay uh, touch typing course. Of course, there are no free ones for that. You have to send children to those that have to be paid for. Sounds like seems like an intern worked on this. Of course, all the websites of the members of the Interstate Commission on the Protection of Youth in the Media is in there. So this isn't quite working. Uh, the internet is much too large, much too fast, and much too interesting. So any kind of editorial team that perhaps uh, tries to register all this uh, won't work, and without any updates it won't work either. And many inter sites interesting for children aren't in there. I asked around uh, my daughter that who, who's going to be nine this next year? Uh, the most websites she uses would be blocked. Um, there is one f popular program called Sendung mit der Maus, the, the mouse program. Uh, not a computer mouse, by the way. Um, so that's included. But there's a lot missing. And uh, of course, YouTube is blocked. So as a six to 12 year old, you would not be able to access that. The telecom filter was so clever that until recently, all HTTPS pages, each and every HTTPS page in the world was blocked. <laughs> the default setting was now changed. So when I tried this this December, HTTPS was allowed. and that would at least get you to some websites. Wikipedia, for example, was not included earlier, which they had recommended. So um, things happen, interesting ones. So because all these things don't seem to work and no editorial team is able to tr travel through the, the whole internet, there's another idea, genius idea since 1997. Well, well let's, let's do some labeling. This works in the cinema. Um, with games, so you can do this online. Just tell every website uh, operator to, to label their website for the ages that uh, it's supposed to be good for. This is in the law, in the old and the new law or the interstate treaty. Not too many changes in the new one. I'm going to talk about that. In 2010, there was a lot more uh, reworking in the last reform, but self-labeling is in the law and you are all supposed to self-label <coughs> or at least those that running that run a website at a larger scale who of you uh, runs a website or operates one professionally and who of you has self-labeling there's no hand and before that there was about a third oh one hand is showing up yeah okay one two YouTube actually has self age labeling. <laughs> Which is why the telecom filter blocks it, even for 16 year old, because the XML that's being shown has 18. Well, uploading in particular is. is well, Actually, uploading would be a different domain, wouldn't it? That should work. And embedding with the no cookie website should actually work because it's another domain again. So um, what you need to do is, is embed them on a different website with a no cookie uh, version, and that should work. I haven't tested it. So the YouTube problem hasn't really been solved this way. And this short example already shows us that self-labeling doesn't really work at all. It's quite quite an effort to do it. It costs. It ignores real-time communication. How are you supposed to label a chat? It could change by any second. Or oh, this this video transmission right now. I could now start uh, showing semi-nude pictures. That would be at least rated 18 of in, in the US and 16 or 12 here. So you see that there are lots of problems and attempts at self-labeling have been there since the mid-90s. There was something called PIX, 
from the World Wide Web Consortium. Consortium that that was an attempt that failed. Uh, Internet Content Rating Association developed a system that failed. There are still websites that that carry that label, but ICRA it is de facto de defunct. Uh, the domain is actually in the hands of some domain grabber now. So the consortium had a second attempt called Powder, which also didn't quite have a success. So the principle of safe rating in itself, well, it is extremely hard to do, to, to label that content. How are you supposed to label a Wikipedia, for example? You could say, well, okay, the whole Wikipedia 18, because somewhere in there, there could be some article about sexual practices. practices is that what you want? So that's not what you want. That, that can't be it. So the way these people imagine these things to be is just not working. And I did actually do a practice test as well. I tested four and a half million domains, asking myself, myself how many of those would have a label according to the German Interstate Treaty on Youth Media Protection. And well, of those four and a half thousand, there was about 1,006 hundred that were rated that's about 0.0.36 percent okay that was worldwide where you could object including some chinese or whatever so let's take all the german ones again it's just 0.22 percent what about children's pages children's pages should have an interest of labeling themselves of saying from six from zero ages but again more than 9,000 and 0.68 percent had a label. So again, we see it is not working. And for the hackers among us, a uh, little insert here uh, to actually go through these websites, I had to access a certain file on all these websites to see if it was there. And, and immediately there were several abuse complaints from some banks in Hong Kong and things like that, because I had the audacity to access this file. Uh, fortunately, my provider isn't very sensitive about these things. So you simply access an, an XML file, which gives a 404 response, but you gets you also a response, uh, an abuse response. And that's what the filter calls as well. So if a child with a, a filter was to access this Hong Kong bank, well, if the provider would then contact the parents, they would be quite surprised what was going on. So probably that bank would not be accessed by children. But the whole thing can be done in reverse too. How many people actually use an, a state uh, verified youth protection program? So you, that's what you can try to do. If you run a web server, look for accesses to that XML file. I did that on my website and asked a few other people that run large websites. This is all in a in the area of vanishingly small uh, numbers, about 0, 0.00 something percent. I had three zeros after the comma two uh, with one page. So um, I can say Heiser Online, who gave me those numbers officially, that was 15 accesses with about 650,000 visits per day. So if you calculate the percentage, it's even lower uh, if you want to see it as a percentage. Okay, Heiser Online is a specific case, but there's 10 million in the line above. That is a, a very common website. I can't name it. It's a website that is used by completely normal families, and the rate, again, 10 million visits, 450 for that XML file. And uh, some others from the top 10 websites in Germany numbers very similar again I'll try to get some numbers uh, some official ones that I can quote from the operators uh, if you run a website yourself that is kind of large please tell me you don't have to name the website but you can there is an article on my blog that tells you how to contact me and how to get those statistics uh, so why does no one use that the programs are terrible you can see that there are just an emergency plug for the porn industry. Well, because the porn industry, even before 11 p.m., would like to show some semi-nude women. And it's, a, it's an alibi, a fig leaf. 
which you could say is not that bad, it doesn't really concern us, but we have the problem with self-labeling, and self-labeling is a problem that goes further. Uh, I did just recently, I, I, did, I did show a moment ago that the law says that someone who runs a website at large scale or commercially is supposed to self-label, self-rate. And the lawyers in this room will then know what should means in a legal sense. It means have to with exceptions. If you are not one of these exceptions, you have to uh, label those pages, even if they are not a threat to minors. So the question then is if someone is going to enforce this and when, but that's what is the state of things right now, and we have to be alert. So that's the face, my daughter's face, if she would have to face a filter. Well, I, I think she would uh, just call me stupid, but well, I don't know. So, so what is the solution if, as a lawmaker, you see that filters are not being used? That's what they know as well. They're not stupid, of course. If no one's using those filters and the websites are not labeled, what do you need to do? Uh, well, you have to see that as many people as possible in introduce self-labeling and make sure filters are spread further. So the best way to do is, is the UK way, enforce filters, uh, oblige people. Perhaps not the way that Germany tried with web blocking, web blocking but um, enforce filtering which default installation in routers or operating systems, so everyone has them. So the Interstate Commission for Youth Protection in the media um, that deals with uh, in, uh, implementing that interstate treaty has been calling for this for a long time. The federal states are saying no for now, but who knows how long this will stay the same. If usage is as stays as slow as it is, if does any one of you have children up to 12 years, let's say, and does any of you, is any one of you using a state's verified filter program one? Okay, right. I will, I will get your complaints later on, I suppose, and everyone's working fine, right? <laughs> that was a response which I couldn't, couldn't hear. Well, uh, uninstall would be my suggestion. But I heard another suggestion from a maker of such a filter program. Well, you shouldn't choose the actual age of your child in the settings. Go one or two further above. So if you said from 18, that means that all only those things on an index by a s federal... Uh, authority for um, certain media would be blocked. So enforcing filters would be what things would be, what, what how things would progress. And if you look at uh, the judgment on web blocking uh, that is being called for by the uh, copyright lobby, um, that has been rejected for now, but a door has been opened and we will see that how things go and uh, it's not looking good. So, let's move to another area. We're actually the same area now. The telecom, the German telecom. There are four officially approved filters by the commission and three of those are essentially the same. They're all made by the same company. Um, uh, he gives them to a, to a non-profit organization and he, they themselves have, have two offerings, like one of them ho hardware, one of them software based. And the telecom has its own product. It's based on a software that um, belongs to IBM. In the meantime, some of you might have heard of it. Everyone's free to use it on Windows and it does great things. Like at each startup, it does sense this request. And we can see that each time the system starts, each time the system starts, the MAC address is sent. That's the globally unique hardware address of your network card. That means 
that an IBM server it belongs to IBM, and it, each time you start your program, it doesn't only get your private IP address, but also your MAC address, of the, the MAC address of your network card, without asking. The, the, the program doesn't ask for permission. It's not down in the terms of contract or the privacy policy or anywhere else. Is this is obviously against law, and a program should be taken off the market immediately because it's illegal in according to German law, because it's sending um, personal data without asking to a server in another country. But not only that, um, without permission, it also sends, well, the the other one, this one is manually encrypted with a proprietary protocol. And um, they sent data to a telecom server over HTTP for almost all websites that you try to access. Not, not entirely clear when you look at what's actually being accessed, but probably just about all of them, it sends the current URL. And because the data is encrypted with some block cipher in CBC mode, no, not in CBC mode, so it um, it repeats every 16 bytes, like it does with a 128-bit key. Well, it's some some encryption method that I haven't managed to crack yet. And well, you should you just need to get some debugging tools if there's somebody in the room who knows about. Windows debugging, then we can. W I'd love to have a look at what's actually being sent here. But I managed to find out that it changes with each URL. It gets longer the longer your URL is. And if you have the same letters in a URL, the block is going to repeat. So it's very likely, it's essentially sure that this code encoded block contains the URL that your child is accessing. So the telecom. Um, gets, an, gets the entire surf protocol of your children without asking and without a possibility to change this. Um, for the other for the other options, you can actually you can at least change them at um, setup. In a competing program. And um, I'm 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 having second thoughts about this because it's not anybody's business really what my daughter is doing online if she had this kind of filter installed, and if, if we had Windows at home, of course. So you can see that these programs only exist for Windows, but the new law is supposed to change all of this because the hurdles are being lowered. But, well, the details that we don't really have time for. I think the, the central point is that it's easy to, to bash these uh, companies who, who make these filters. I mean, they only do it to to be able to show naked ladies online before 11 o'clock. That's the reason behind these filters. So the, uh, the, actual, the actual perpetrator is politics, but the problem is that it's state politics in Germany. So all 16 federal states of Germany have to sign a common contract and then has to go through, has to be ratified by the state parliaments. And it's connected to the, um, to the German public service child broadcaster and the, the likelihood that the uh, state parliaments are going to say no, it's pretty unlikely because all of them want to have the have the child broadcaster and well this state um, the state treaty yeah it's just something attached to to that so it's a massive problem on a political scale and I and some other people tried to get these programs to at least have a high privacy threshold but the states rejected that and now you can see why so the uh, filter companies apparently did some lobbying and said, no, our programs aren't going to work anymore. So this is about politics. And I'm, I'm certain that it has to 
be discussed on a federal level and not on a state level because 16 federal states on a global medium, it doesn't work. And um, if, w if it were discussed on a federal scale, we'd have more transparency, we'd have more opportunities for change um, because on a, on a federal scale, it's easier to, to change things when you don't have to consult 16 states. And of course, well, it's not a problem for a large company like YouTube to, to label its stuff, but who knows if they're not, you know, if they're not working on, on algorithms to to label individual videos instead of labeling their entire website for 18 year olds. But small bloggers can't do that. And you can always say, yeah, it's not, you know, he, he doesn't have to worry because he doesn't have any um, any dangerous, uh, dangerous contents. But that's not true because as soon as you target, as, you, as soon as you have um, contents that are not appropriate for under 16 year olds, you're in trouble. And that can happen very quickly. So this um, is down to lawmakers to, uh, to actually start doing something. We need a discussion, we need a debate. We can't just say, yeah, no, we're not, we, we won't do anything. But uh, filters don't solve the problem. Another large topic is the convergence of media online and offline kind of m meld together, but they're doing it wrong. I mean, a book that you can buy in a shop or that as a publisher you can sell in a shop needs age labeling online, even though it doesn't in do in a physical shop, if it were for over 16 year olds. It has to have a labeling, it has to have an age label if it's targeted at over 16 year olds. But they, this is silly, I mean, nobody can explain this to you. There's, nobody can explain to me what the higher, what, what the increased danger it would be here. And why an ebook should have a label, but not a printed one. So, things that have already been labeled and um, and um, opt-in labels, they're, they're okay. Labels that particularly label child-friendly content, which would give them higher priority. So, um, and the real risk should be looked at, uh, which is not that a 10-year-old uh, goes to some weird website. Um, well, one in 10,000 cases there might be, but, but the child would get there uh, somehow. Anyway, people, the pupils will show each other films at, in the schoolyard. So communications risks are the ones that really exist and, and filters will never be able to address those. Uh, media competency is the answer. That area has to be supported and enlarged and parents that really, really want to install a filter should be able to do that. I'm not going to bash anyone if they, if they do. Well, whether they, I'm going to disagree with them is another matter, but those that want to can do it and they have a choice. Uh, there are not just a few state verified or acknowledged ones, uh, there are a few others too. So no one is keeping you from, from installing those, but the state should not enforce this. That was a quick run through. Uh, any, any questions? We have four minutes, so three questions also. Um, okay, now it's working. I have a question from the other side. I'm a teacher and I keep battling with these filter systems at school. And the problem, of course, is making pornography accessible is a crime, which is as a school and the provider, the uh, school provider, have to install them. So, what options do you see for that? Well, I'm not sure about having to do that. It, people always say that you have to do that, but there's no judgment on this. There's no. Um, I, re I remember a case at our school. Some people at a at a 
at a slideshow had a had a porn pornographic image. That's that's something that can happen when students want to want to have fun. And these things could happen today as well. I think it's important that schools ensure that uh, the teacher can see all the monitors, all the all the computer screens. But I wouldn't install a filter in a school. I don't think that there's a legal basis for this. And I think it's simply something that some people, you know, don't understand the, the, the legal grounds for this. I, I understand that this happens, but it's not the solution. Uh, there is a question about, um, about regulations for open source. Uh, my daughter is able to install a YouTube unlocker, uh, a plugin that exists in the 10,000th version. Uh, my father is able to, to read user ratings. Um, but there are many parents that would be interested to rate themselves. Um, I don't think there's a chance. Yeah, you could do that, but I don't think there's a chance to uh, create a rating system that um, completes the uh, the uh, the needs of those that the reasonable people have would have. I think it's more important that um, the parents um, tell their children and they they um, they teach their children how to use the internet, and that the computer is um, in a in a common area where where, where children can be supervised and yes we need filters for p families who don't look after their children that's what everyone says i mean most people aren't going to say that out loud but there are people who, who live under under, under b bad conditions but you're not going to get to get them to install filters you can only force them to do it but that's something that's quickly you know quickly undone so yes it could be done it's going to be difficult to get um, get these open source filters approved. Has the telecom said anything about the fact that they collect all this data? This is not data they need. Uh, IP is from a local network on Max. I haven't asked them yet, I have to admit. It's simply because I was working on these slides until five minutes before my talk. Yeah, he has. I helped him. 